still hoping for a video on number plate recognition. Well, Lawrence, you need not hope any longer. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Tech Tutorial Tuesday, the series where you guys ask questions and I do my best to answer them as quickly and efficiently as possible. And this week, we are taking a look at number plate or license plate recognition. And I actually sat down to film a different tutorial this week um, when I saw on Twitter that Robin Cole had released a new integration on his GitHub that would allow you to do license plate or number plate recognition in Home Assistant. And I just couldn't resist because it's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Very quickly, if you like this video, make sure to drop it a like and hit the subscribe button and I will very much appreciate it. And if you want your question answered in the next Tech Tutorial Tuesday, make sure to drop it in the comments down below. And you never know, I might just answer it. So what is the point of number plate recognition within Home Assistant. Well, it's useful for being able to create automation such as a garage door opener or a gate opener or even as one of your methods of presence detection. Now, this integration uses a cloud service called platerecognizer.com. So not running locally this time, but in the cloud. And that gives you 2,500 free images per month. And it's running on demand rather than continuously. Otherwise, you would obviously go over those free limits very quickly. As mentioned, this runs in the cloud, so not running locally. However, I have tried a program called OpenALPR, which is an open source program that runs locally on your own hardware, and I was very underwhelmed by the results. Even using the exact same image, I would get different results from run to run, and it was ideal conditions for detection. So it was an image of a car straight on, um, and I would get different results even on the easiest of characters, and it would just mess up all the time. So I was very underwhelmed by OpenALPR. If you guys have got any any suggestions for any other local ones that run that aren't open ALPR based, then do let me know in the comments down below and I'd like to check them out in the future. The only requirements for this are a camera already set up within Home Assistant and it needs to have a motion detection attribute on it, either natively through the camera or you could feed that camera into something like Motion Eye, which should give you a motion detection flag. The reason you're gonna need the motion detection flag is that we can't really use a time based automation, otherwise you're very quickly going to um, run into the 2,500 images per month limit. I worked out it was something like you'd only be able to run one scan every 20 minutes or so to keep within that API limit. Um, and that's obviously not very usable if you want to use it for a garage door opener, for example. First things first, you'll need to sign up for a free account on platerecognizer.com. Once you've done that, you'll want to head over to the account page and at the top under the cloud API section, you will see your API key. Make sure to take a note of this. Next, you'll want to grab the link for Robin's GitHub, which I'll have linked in the description down below. And then we're gonna head over to Hacks. If you haven't installed Hacks before or you're not sure what I'm talking about, make sure to check out this video up here. Inside Hacks, click on Integrations and then click on the three dots in the top right hand corner and choose Custom Repositories. Paste in the link to Robin's GitHub in the box and then choose Integrations as the type and then hit Add. Then click the Add Integrations button on Hacks and search for Plate and install the Haas Plate Recognizer integration after which you'll need to restart your Home Assistant. Then we need to add a little bit of config. I've set up a simulation camera which includes this image of a couple of cars. Obviously, you would use your own camera. I thought this was a good test because for one, it has multiple plates in it, and also the first car on the left is kind of tilted off to one side, so not just straight on. It also has the letter G next to the letter six, and they look very similar, so I thought this would be a good test. Realistically, it's not gonna get the three cars at the back because I can't even read them myself, so we'll just ignore those. Head over into your config and then we need to add the following lines. In the API tokens field, make sure to paste in the API key that we took a note of earlier. In the regions box, you're gonna to want to enter your region since each region has a different style of plate. I'm entering GB here for the UK and you can enter multiple regions if you want, but try to narrow it down as much as possible. I'll leave a link to the list of regions in the description box down below. In the save file folder, you can configure where images of recognized plates are stored. This will save an image with the box highlighting the plate. You can enable or disable this if you want, along with the always save latest JPEG option. Finally, in the source, make sure to enter the name of your camera. 
Then save and restart your Home Assistant one last time. From there, head over to DevTools and then States and search for the image processing entity. And as usual, we have an unknown state, which is normal. Head over to Services and then we need to run the image processing.scan service and choose the Plate Recognizer entity and hit the Scan button. Jump back over to States and within a few seconds, you should have some results. As you can see, it gives us back the number plate it recognized as well as a confidence level. And impressively, it got both number plates correct and didn't seem to have an issue with the G and the six, which is impressive. Certainly way more accurate than open ALPR was for me. You'll also see in the attributes box that it notifies us as to how many images we have left on the free tier, which could be useful if you want to set up some automations based on that. From there, we can create a basic automation that triggers the service based on the motion detection from your camera. You can see that I'm using the motion detection template as my trigger, which will then call the image processing.scan service. One other nice feature of this is that they actually store the history of your plates and images on the website. If you head back to the platerecognizer.com website and into your dashboard, you can quickly see a list of all the images you have ran. Similarly, if you chose to save your images in the config, you should see them now appear in the folder that you selected. And they'll look a little bit like this. You can see it draws a red box around the image. And this is useful if you want to create a camera for all of the live number plate recognitions and then have that camera update with the latest JPEG option. And there we go, guys. That is a basic guide on getting your own license plate recognition software up and running. Obviously, this is running in the cloud and not running local, but I do think it's a good trade-off to have because the open or the local solutions don't seem to be quite there yet from my experience, and I'd much rather have something that was accurate and reliable rather than something local. Obviously, if you guys have any suggestions for locally running software that is better than open ALPR, please do let me know in the comments. I'd love to check them out, um, and we can hopefully do a video on that in the future. But that is about all the time we have for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, let me know are you planning on using this in your own setup and what sort of automations do you plan on making with this i'm really interested to see where you guys are going to use it hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much for watching make sure to drop it a like if you liked it hit the thumbs up and get subscribed if you aren't already and i will see you in the next video Pew.